Hi guys, it's Ben here. Welcome back to another video. This is the preview for Borussia Dortmund versus Liverpool, but we'll look at the tour as a whole as Liverpool go to the United States of America to take on Dortmund, Man City, which is the game I'll be at, and then Manchester United in Ann Arbor in the final game before we come back and play a couple more games before the season starts. Before we get into it, just a reminder to follow me on Instagram at Ben Might Say for a chance to win any Liverpool shirt of your choice from 2018-19 season. You'll see my latest post on there with the three Liverpool shirts and they follow Ben Might Say uh, sign. So just follow the instructions on that post. You can win yourself any Liverpool shirt. Good luck to all of you. So a couple of bits of news which relates to the tour. Obviously Ryan Kent appears to have agreed a season-long loan with Rangers, so he becomes another player, uh, a former or current Liverpool player, to hook up with Steven Gerrard at Rangers. And Danny Ings uh, cannot make it to the tour because apparently he has some rehabilitation to do, but I think we think he's off anyway as well, so wouldn't be surprised if he gets a deal wrapped up for himself in the next week or two himself. Danny Ward, another one um, that won't be there, of course, he's no longer a Liverpool player, he's gone to Leicester, so Kelleher ste steps in as the third choice goalkeeper for this tour behind Karras and Grabara. Obviously, new world record signing Allison doesn't join just yet, he's going back on holiday. So, Plenty of interesting cases on this tour, plenty of interesting players um, with futures undecided, um, some in the shop window, so let's kind of have a look at them, um, those guys that have a point to prove basically. So I've kind of mapped out what I think the starting lineup might be. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'll put long odds on this actually being right, but I'll, I'll go through what I'd like to see as a starting eleven and talk through any players that I think... Um, it, this is a significant tour for. Um, so Karius, I think, will start in goal. This is, in some ways, a significant tour for him because um, I think he just needs to prove that he is uh, over what's gone before. Maybe, maybe the fact that Alisson is now in just lifts a bit of pressure off him. Um, he can just kind of be himself. He knows he's not the number one anymore. He knows um, all of the attention is no longer on him. He's no longer this meme. Um, so and now that Ward has gone as well, that might play on his mind a little bit too. No Mignolet on this tour, so um, although he's probably likely to leave as well. So Karras can just get on with it, be a safe pair of hands, God forbid, uh, on this tour, and hopefully have a good game against Dortmund. Back four, I think Klein, Van Dijk, Clavin and Robertson. Um, just an opportunity for a few new partnerships in there. We've not seen Van Dijk and Clavin together yet this preseason. Um, Clavin played next to Moreno the other day as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, as far as those players are concerned, I think they're all... Bar Klein, absolutely fine. Um, I mean, obviously, Robertson and Van Dijk are. Clavin should be okay. It doesn't look like we're going to do any more business incoming. So, as far as centre-backs are concerned, we obviously need all the ones that we've currently got. Uh, Nat Klein, obviously, we've got Gomez. We've got Trent to come back in. So, I mean, and that number two shirt is still there. And Fabinho hasn't taken a number yet. So, all sorts of conspiracy theories about Nathaniel Klein's future. Um, he has obviously been heavily featured in pre-season, and he is obviously a former in well, a current England international, I suppose. Um, only injuries have prevented him making any appearances for them recently. So where do you stand on Nathaniel Klein? Um, he's looked okay, I think, in the first few games. I think some people have thought he looked a bit shaky, but I haven't noticed anything too untoward with him. Um, I still think he's a quality right-back, and he would have been good for us last season at times, though he needed a bit of experience. But it, having said that, it was invaluable for Trent and Gomez, two young stars, with a lot of potential, but, uh, particularly Trent, who is for sure now our first choice right back, um, which is great. Uh, great to have a local lad in there, someone who's got so much quality from set pieces. His crossing's great. He's 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 got so much pace defensively. He's getting better. You know, in the Champions League run, he was particularly good. So the final climb's future is by no means certain. So you know, maybe this tour is a chance him to prove that he does need to stick around. Um, there we go. Midfield three, it's quite tricky when you've not got Henderson and Wijnaldum in there to pick a balanced midfield three. Um, when you're when, well, in two halves at least. I mean, when you've got Fabinho, Keita, and someone else in there, a Lallana or, or a more creative player, you're okay. But um, if you put that together, then your other half midfield is pretty iffy. So I'm going for Milner, Keita, and Woodburn first half. Um, Milner didn't play too well the other night, but he didn't have a Naby Keita next to him. Um, I think it was Alana and Woodburn. So maybe if he's got a bit more legs in there with him, that will help him out if he's playing in that deeper role. Um, second half for Vigno, Alana and Jones, which is probably a bit more balanced anyway. Um, but I'm just, you know, I'm just guessing here, really. And then up front, Ojo, Sturridge and Markovic as the front three, I think, for the first half. Um, Ojo's looked relatively okay uh, in a few of these games. Sturridge is the man. Um, 
now his future seems to be, everyone seems to just presume he's staying now, which is not something I'd have expected a few weeks ago, but he scored the other night, he scored a couple at uh, Chester, him and Naby Keita look like they were on the same wavelength right from the off against Blackburn in the second half, um, Keita seemed to really enjoy playing with him, um, so yeah, let's get them out on the same pitch together again and see if Sturridge can prove once again he's still got something in him. Um, so, I mean, whether he is a striker, I mean, maybe he'll put Origi or Solanke up front with Sturridge there, um, rather than the, the two wide men that I mentioned, or Joe Markovic. But um, I'd still like to think that Sturridge can play as a centre-forward because, you know, as everyone keeps saying to me, we don't have really uh, a backup centre-forward that is of the sufficient quality that we need. So, you know, let's get Sturridge up there um, and Keita can just sort of, like, find him. Uh, as he did the other night, and yeah, hopefully we see some more joy there. Second half, uh, Grabara, Gomez, Matip, Phillips, Moreno, just the, re the rest of them. Fabinho, Alana Jones, as I said. Now, Curtis Jones has been terrific in pre-season so far. It's because we've got such a bloated squad and so many midfielders, um, I find it quite unlikely that we'll keep both him and Woodburn. But to be honest, if you're looking to keep one of them right now, you probably are leaning towards Curtis Jones. Um, so let's see how it gets on here. And then Camacho, Solanke and Origi. Solanke and Origi seem to have played together um, most of the time when Klopp has picked them for these friendlies. So let's assume that he'll do the same here. He may not. It's all guesswork. But yeah, it's a big, it's a big summer for a lot of these guys. I mean, Lazar Markovic, let's touch on him. I mean, he... Scored at Blackburn, looks pretty tidy, um, but and some people are calling for him to have a second opportunity at Liverpool. Let's not kid ourselves. I mean, we all talk ourselves into players in pre-season. I remember a few years ago at Kulani, I think it might have been before the 12-13 season maybe. At Kulani, maybe the season before that, but at Kulani looked terrific in pre-season. And me and my mate were just like, oh my God, this guy's got to stick around, stick around. Um, he left and his career just kind of never really took off. Um, Lazar Markovic has had failed loan spells at the likes of Sporting Lisbon. Hull City, I thought he was okay. I, whenever I saw him at Hull, I thought he was okay. I mean, he had absolutely no pace. He just, it's like he's completely transformed, transformed his game to sort of like a, a Gaston Ramirez style player where it's just like he's, he just floats around in maybe a number 10 position, um, has a bit of creativity about him, but no cutting edge really, no pace, no, not enough confidence. Um, that was always the biggest issue at Liverpool, Markovic, the confidence. He had that big, yeah, that great run around Christmas 2014, early 2015, that game at Sunderland, you'll remember. Um, and I think, I think that was January 2015 where he looked like a world beater. But it never happened for him after that. He's not appeared for us in a competitive game since 2015. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he, he was so out of shape when he turned up at Anderlecht uh, last season that it took him six weeks to get in the team at all. He only made about five or six appearances there. So let's not sit, suddenly think that he can burst his way into the Liverpool squad, but... You know, fair play to him for doing well at Blackburn, and if he can have a good um, tour, then he might get a decent enough move. Um, you know, Ryan Kent's left, so that pays away for him to have plenty of opportunities um, in this front three, or even as number ten. So there we go. I mean, it's three exciting games. You know, Dortmund. Um, obviously, lots of history between us and Dortmund. Not just the manager, but the uh, the European games. Not just of the Europa League in a couple of seasons ago, but Champions League back in the early two thousands. I remember. Um, so it's going to be a great occasion. Record crowds in in a couple of these games. I think over a hundred thousand going to the United game. I'm really excited to get to the City game. Um, we've got Mane, Salah, and Shakiri in the squad. Um, they're apparently not going to make it. Uh, onto the pitch until the third game uh, against Man United, uh, which is well timed. Uh, although I'm, I'm, you know, it's a shame I won't see them uh, in New Jersey, but you know I'm going to see them plenty throughout the season, so I'm not going to complain. Vinaldum is also there as well, um, but he has been he's had a knock, so I'm not sure if he's ready yet. I've got some other notes here. Chiravella's there and Keller is there, so Chiravella I suppose could slot in anywhere. Um, he's kind of that deep lying midfielder, so I guess. Uh, if you want some balance in that midfield second half, then um, he could be the one to maybe fill in rather than uh, a Jones or a Woodburn. Obviously, there's three games here in quite a short space of time, so plenty of chances for playing time for all of these guys. Um, so, yeah, let's let's uh, have a bit of a score prediction, shall we? Let's go for a Daniel Sturridge 1-0 win. Um, that'll do very nicely against a Dortmund side who, you know, 
haven't quite got that bit of stardust about them that they once did. Obviously last season they had the likes of Batshuari scoring quite a lot of goals for them. Obviously they lost to Bemiang during the middle of the campaign. Marco Royce missed a lot of the season through injury but when he was fit towards the back end of the campaign he was fit and firing so hopefully for him uh, this season he can get back to his absolute best. He is pushing towards 30 now so I mean after all these rumours we've had over the years of him coming to Liverpool, going to Barcelona, Real Madrid, I mean he, he's kind of getting towards being past that peak of his career and he's still at Dortmund so I mean who would have thought that. They've signed the centre-back Abdou Diallo from Mainz, they've signed Thomas Delaney, the midfielder from Werder Bremen. I mean realistically they're probably looking at another Champions League push. I mean Bayern Munich are head and shoulders above everyone else in the Bundesliga so I think, I mean, who really cares about our league anymore. But anyway, all that we're really bothered about is the Reds so let's see how we get on. Let's see uh, if anything newsworthy comes out of this game, I certainly hope it does. I hope we see lots of goals and lots of positive play. I mean, Naby Keita has been exciting us all uh, in this pre-season campaign so far, and rightly so. So it'd be good to see what he's like against his, well, an opposition that he knows all too well. Um, so anyway, thanks guys for watching. I am going to be doing a post-match reaction of this game straight afterwards, uh, and then a... Man City preview as well I guess from here and then I fly out to New York on Wednesday um, just in time for the City game that evening so I'll be vlogging that um, so plenty more to come so subscribe if you are new and don't forget to enter the competition to win any Liverpool shirt of your choice from this season all the details on my Instagram it's Ben might say so follow me on there and you'll see my latest post with the competition details uh, and good luck with all of that and I'll see you next time